Yo, what's up, man? What is going on, my dude? Uh, Not much, dude. I sorry, I always just got a groove to that to that drop a little bit. So, and we're vibing a little bit. We've already we've gotten a shout out from people who were like, "Hey, I like it. Don't change it." Yeah, yeah, it's a good so. song. And I finally we had I've had some technical issues over the the course of our existence, but we got those figured out. So now we just grooving. You know, that's just yeah, that's just the the journey of of running a, a YouTube channel or a yeah. podcast. Yeah. So, which by the way, if you're checking us out, hey, welcome. Hello, We're Pixelus. I'm That's Blake, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm Will. And uh, do you want to tell them who we are? Or what yeah, we yeah. Do, or... So um, we're the Pixelus. You can you can join us too. We we can all be one big Pixelus family. But uh, we're just two friends. Like to talk about shows, movies, video games, which we haven't talked about any yet. Uh, but we're working on it. And um, yeah, we just get together, talk about it, theorize deep dive you know it's just stuff we love so we figured you know what let's make a podcast about it that's that's pretty much it but um yeah today today we're talking about marvel disney newest show what if what if episode two i feel this temptation every time we intro it to be like what if i don't know it feels like that's the vibe of the show is like no i like it (laughs) i like it (laughs) next next one we do with these we're like we're not doing that anymore (laughs) It's like don't bring it up. <laughs> I'm gonna do yeah, it, so though. we had uh what if what if episode two, and it was what if T'Challa uh became or was, I can't remember the phrasing, but what if T'Challa became a Star Lord? Yeah. So should we do a little recap? Uh yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, let's just get that out of the way. And then we'll okay, just, yeah. we'll just dive in. Yeah, so we'll do a little recap. And uh by the way, for those of you guys who are checking us out. Uh, thanks for being part of this journey. Yes. And uh, we're going to be talking about what if. We want you to be involved in the conversation. So definitely all the stuff we talk about today. If you have an opinion, you have a perspective, don't hesitate to engage with us down in the comments below. Yes, please but, do. But um, this was episode two, What If T'Challa Became a Star-Lord. And it's pretty cool. I mean, you have this same similar scene, just like we saw in episode one. We're seeing some scenes that we're familiar with where Star-Lord is uh, basically, um, what's the name of the planet? I almost said Vormir, which is totally not right. Um, more Morath? Something. Morath. Morag, um, maybe? Morag. The purists are already pissed off. He's like, you <laughs> can't even get the name right. But So he's on the same planet that we saw from Guardians of the Galaxy 1, where Peter Quill, Star-Lord, is walking in to um, pick up the floating artifact Um before basically getting uh, ambushed by um, what's the name of Ronan's lieutenant? Oh man, <laughs> we should have done our research <laughs> before. <laughs> Some people are like, "We're out." Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, I don't, so, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the guy is what we'll call him for now. But instead of it being Peter Quill, it is um, T'Challa. And what we see in the episode is that T'Challa is this bright eyed, curious person who is with his dad in Wakanda in the late eighties, kind of thinking about, you know, what's out there, what's in the, what's out in the world. And his dad basically says only destruction. Like there's nothing good that can come from out and exploring, but yet T'Challa is very curious and basically makes his way exploring outside of Wakanda and it's, um, illusory shield and basically gets picked up by the ravagers and um basically um they uh yandu is basically like hey does this look like peter quill to you and his you know two uh bootmen are like yeah i mean all humans look the same they have two eyes and two ears and a nose and a mouth and uh yandu's kind of he's kind of surprised and impressed by t'challa being like hey you don't seem really thrown off by the fact that some aliens basically are abducting you yeah and he's like yeah i want to see the world and he's like what about not just one world but tons of worlds and 
anyway, so we get a flash forward and basically T'Challa has been working with the Ravagers as this sort of Robin Hood esque, you know, steal from the rich, give to the poor type figure. And the Ravagers in general are a very um, sort of noble group. They go on missions to sort of um, help people. And so he's here, he's picking up this, this floating artifact and immediately he gets ambushed by the guy. Korath. And his, what's that? Korath is his name. Korath. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Korath. Um, duh. Uh, <laughs> Korath's there. And the really cool thing is different from the original movie is he says, you know, I'm Star Lord. And he's like, oh my gosh, you're <laughs> yeah. Star Lord. Are you, you know, as opposed to Guardians of the Galaxy 1, where he's like, who? And he's like, you're famous. You're amazing. And they have yeah. this awesome banner. Finally agree to spar and duel. And um, Star Lord defeats him and then decides, hey, this could be a nice little protege. So he basically takes him with him unconscious and uh, goes out. Yandu shows up, kills a bunch of soldiers, and they go off. And uh, the coolest thing is they're later in there in a bar scene, kind of just t- swapping stories. And uh, Korath's just like, you know, tell me about this story, tell me about that story. And we have Nebula, who is seemingly whole yeah. in terms of not traumatized by, you know, being tortured by Thanos. And we even have Thanos pop up as this. He's a Ravager. He's part of the team. He's part of the crew. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I was going to, you know, they kind of joke about it. He was like, they're like, we're pretty sure that was genocide. And he was like, no, 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 it was efficient. (laughs) And uh, says basically T'Challa has met with him and talked to him and convinced him, hey, it's a bad idea. Let's find a new way to help the universe. And uh, so it's this ragtag bunch of people. And they basically go out on a mission to um, retrieve this, uh, bio form and a vial that basically has endless potential to grow and basically feed the universe is kind of the premise of it. Yeah. And it's being held by the collector on nowhere. And so they go to the collector to try to steal this artifact and Nebula basically double crosses them. And it comes, it, it, the spin of it is that actually she's owed a debt to the collector and she's agreed to bring star lord t'challa to um in exchange to pay off her debt and uh there's some other cool details there where um what's the name of thanos's army or his uh elite the, guard the black order yeah the black order is now working as like mercenaries for the collector yeah the collector is definitely beefed up um we see later on that the collector has all sorts of amazing artifacts like captain America's shield and Hela's crown, which we'll talk about here in a second. But basically through a turn of events, it's actually what Nebula's actually done is triple crossed the collector and T'Challa was in on it. And this was all a plan to actually cleverly steal that uh, bio form that they've been trying to get. Yeah, the the embers of Genesis, I believe. (laughs) Thank you. So there's a big chase scene that plays out, them trying to escape. And um, basically, the Black Order get it handed to them. And uh, Yandu and T'Challa end up fighting the Collector. And that's when he puts on the crown of Hela, uh, which is a really awesome fight scene. And then um, T'Challa and Yandu get the, get the best of them. And they basically trap him in one of his Collector-esque uh, containers. And they let loose everyone else. You, you see that there's like hundreds, if not thousands, of people that... The collector has been collecting um, and uh, his fate is left to, I guess, their sense of justice. And uh, that's essentially the episode. I think maybe I was very long winded about it, but um, uh, that's episode <laughs> well, two. Yeah. Um, initial thoughts. What What did you think? I really liked it. Um, it was what, what, what I was set up for from episode one was that, okay, we're going to see a similar story, but with some key clever differences. Right. Because that's what we saw in episode one. We had almost a shot by shot similarity with the actual Captain America initial movie. Yeah. This went way, I don't say <laughs> off the rails. Off the rails makes it seem like it was insanity. It, it went totally different. The yeah. only similar scene was um, that opening scene of of getting the uh sphere yeah um everything else was was pretty different (laughs) um which i liked it was cool it was like i have no idea where this is gonna go 
Um, it was well shot. It was cool. Um, fight scenes were cool. Uh, I don't know. What'd you think? Yeah, I loved it. I was I was caught off guard too because um, if if you haven't seen our first episode discussion, we kind of both went into this quasi blind because we wanted to kind of just experience it. So I didn't really know what to expect from the series as a, as a whole. And having seen episode one, I was like, okay, that's going to be the formula. So then kind of like you just said, jumping into episode two, where we kind of go way the other way almost. I was just so excited. Like um, in the opening credits, I did notice that I was like, oh, Josh Brolin's in this. And I was like, so are we going to get, uh, are we going to see Thanos? And I, I, I figured it would be like a quick kind of, so we saw ego at the end of this episode. Right. Like Which one, I, I can't believe I didn't mention that in the recap. <clears throat> Uh, but if you want to hit on that just very quickly, oh yeah, so like we can the, talk about it later. Yeah, the the stinger at the end of the episode was Ego, uh, Peter Quill's dad, who is a celestial, shows up on Earth and uh, goes into a Dairy Queen where Peter Quill is working and is like, "Hey, son, ain't got any time for your dad?" And his like eyes are glowing and it just ends. Um, so we yeah we'll talk about that, but uh, that's kind of the like josh brolin appearance i expected like a quick one line cut to thanos or something like that so right. just when he like was the main character of the episode i was just like so excited and basically like that those are my thoughts on the episode of at whole just like all the fun things that i like did not expect at all to happen um i i enjoyed episode one but like i really enjoyed episode two and obviously yeah. a, a big part of this is just the like kind of the weird mix of emotions of like getting to see Chadwick Boseman um, perform again, it, like that, that was awesome, but also, you know, in a way, very kind of somber, but um, I, I loved, I get just to, to go off on that for a second, I, how like cool it is that we do get to have kind of one more adventure with him as um, T'Challa and like, what a cool, like, I'm trying not to start too many chains of conversation here at once, but like just T'Challa's character, like what an awesome, like kind of message to like, to be sent out with like that. He like just the strength of his character made such vast changes in the universe. Like right. <laughs> he be befriended Thanos and prevented trillions of deaths, you know, like there was just so much was altered just by one man's like compassion. That's debatable. I mean, it was very efficient. Um, <laughs> I'm subscribed to uh, Thanos did nothing wrong subreddit. So, um, yeah, and Chadwick Boseman is actually going to be in three other episodes. That's um, yeah, that's what I heard. So yeah, and it's it's each going to be a different version of T'Challa every time. Oh. Which we, we had talked in episode one on what kind of connectiveness are we going to see? Are we going to see same universe characters appear in a follow up episode? Mm -hmm. um, but from what we what's been reported, um, it's each each one's going to be a different version of him. OK, I did not um, know that. It's pretty so interesting. Interesting. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, it was it was and just in general, it's cool to see. Um, I, I think I kind of expected it to be voice actors who could really pull off their, um, you know, their Thanos voice. Right. It's crazy seeing these actors doing the voice work. Yeah, and we've had a mix, so I'm not really sure right, what the story right. is. Like, maybe it was scheduling, maybe it was, you know, who knows. But, um, like, because Chris Evans didn't do Steve Rogers right. in the previous one. Uh, but, yeah, and uh, Dave Batista didn't do Drax in this one. But Chadwick did it. Karen Gillian did Nebula. Josh Brolin did Thanos. Uh, uh, the Collector. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of his name. Benicio he, Del Toro, he did yep, that. Yep, and, uh, uh huh and uh michael rooker did yondu again so like this episode besides drax pretty much had everyone like their actual Dude, actor play them. these actors have made it man i mean there's no <laughs> shortage of job opportunities in the marvel universe so that's right man it's it's wild to me for sure but um yeah i mean it was a it was a crazy episode how different it was um you know i watch all the episodes with my wife and she was like yeah that was really cool um, I, I do want to go to a detail you just mentioned on, first of all, the, the power of, um, the charisma and the character of T'Challa in convincing Thanos that his idea was bad. Yeah. Like and that was that, that 
was so wild to me that that now there's no snap there's no <laughs> universe isn't wiped out yeah um and you know thanos it's so great he has a later scene where he's so casually talking about like oh it's random it's cool it's not it's <laughs> yeah not really it's like that. not genocide <laughs> yeah yeah um I mean, just that's all it's, it it's took, amazing you know yeah. just one like good friend really and it's just what's interesting is that we don't we're not told how old chadwick is in 1988 but he looks to be six to yeah. ten somewhere in that range sure. and then yeah. it's a 20 year jump so and seemingly at, at the where we take place in the episode like they thanos has been with them for a while maybe a few mm -hmm. years even so that means that t'challa might have been a teenager when he <laughs> talked down the mad titan and made him change his ways like the young kid, I... a young kid yeah, and I and I assume that the same kid is probably who changed Yandu and oh, changed yeah, the yeah. Ravagers for the better. 100%, I mean, yeah. you know, now they are this, and I mentioned it earlier, this very noble, um, you know, everything they do. It's like when they get the artifact off of, um, I'm forgetting the name of the planet again, man. <laughs> um, we got to figure this out. It's Morag. It's gonna... Let I think look, you're I'm right. I'm just gonna Google it real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta get Jamie pull this up. Yeah, I think you know, it's it like is, we gotta figure this out. Morag is a planet in the okay. MCU. It's gotta be so Morag. That, that has to be okay. it. Yeah. But even when they get it <laughs> and they're leaving, he says, um, "You know, think about how many people we can help with something like this." Yeah, and it is the, um, the Power Stone, right? Like that's yeah, what was uh -huh. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's housing it. That's right. So yeah, it's an Infinity Stone. Yeah. So. Um, which, you know, is another interesting conversation. Thanos isn't collecting them. So, um, Ronan isn't working for Thanos and, um, can you hear my kids screaming in the background, by the way? No. Okay, good. <laughs> it's real loud. But, um, you know, I love how Korath is basically like, yeah, my boss Ronan, he's kind of an intense dude. <laughs> yeah. And, um, what we are, you already mentioned it in the recap, but just the, that, scene at the beginning where he's like star lord that was just like so cool that like again just to speak to his his charisma and his like spirit that he like had made that big of an impact on the universe like as a whole which really just goes what? peter quill sucks you know like, <laughs> what, like t'challa for star lord you know yeah i mean uh, we can sum up this version of star lord as like just a really cool dude like yeah. everyone who seems to meet him is like wow, I really like you. Like you bring out the best in people. Like everyone, I loved Corette at the end who was like, yeah, you could say we're like, we're kind of best friends. <laughs> you know, it's just like stuff like that. It's, it, it's yeah, it definitely speaks to the character of T'Challa. Um, it, and it was cool. I liked that he got to get reunited with his family at the end. Yeah. Um, Cause I actually didn't realize that Yandu had lied. And I didn't said, either until the I, yeah, I thought the implication was T'Challa being absent somehow led to the end of of Wakanda, which yeah. was insane to me. Um, but it was a cool twist that he had just basically been tricked. Yeah. And uh, another cool little ripple effect was that Drax was just a happy bartender. Like his wife and daughter were still alive because, you mm -hmm. know, they were never killed via Thanos' whatever you want to call it, quest. Yeah, and I like that Nebula. We got to see a version of Nebula that wasn't like, you know, a hollow shell. Yeah, tortured. But was, yeah, was this like amazing woman who was um, classy and charismatic and fun. And, you know, it's like, hey, good job, T'Challa. Not only did you save like trillions of lives, you kept this poor woman from being like totally bastardized by her dad. Yeah. Um, the other detail that was interesting was I was like, well, where's where's Gamora? And my wife was like, right. well, she's not here because Thanos never went and wiped out her her planet. I yeah, guess. right. Exactly. Which I, which I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you're right. Which so. I know that from like trailer footage, we're getting we're getting some Gamora in one of these episodes at least. So it'll be interesting to see like, and it might not be the same universe, right? Like, so the Gamora we see in a later episode might not be connected to this T'Challa star Lord universe, but even still, it'll be interesting to see kind of an, an alternate version of her. Be right. Really interesting. If it was connected to this universe still, but I'm not going to hold my breath for that. Connection. We're really hanging on to that. It feels like it's a missed opportunity. If there isn't some kind of connection that happens at some point in the show. So I think, I think we're just gonna hang our hat on that and just really push that every yeah. time. <laughs> I mean, there there will be. I it just seems like it has if, to. I don't know if these two necessarily will be the right. ones, but yeah, there right. definitely will be. Um, 
how about the collector being like dude's jacked out of his mind yeah and sort of filling that power vacuum I mean, he has the black order working for him um dude's pretty nutso um but he's definitely he's been doing he's been doing some lifts i mean the guy he's he's a worthy opponent for sure yeah i'm trying to think of uh what that the race is called because that he, he is like an ancient like very powerful race uh he's the same thing as the grand master from thor ragnarok which was um oh, oh my gosh what's his name the uh, actor's name goldblum yeah yeah jeff goldblum so i think they're like brothers or they're at least the same race the um, elders of the universe yeah so like he is like you know benicio del toro is not wasn't like that jacked as they animated him to be but like the collector is a very powerful um entity and uh you know i liked that like it that made sense to me that since you know the, the power vacuum like you said of, of thanos not doing it anymore like that that kind of makes that's a major player that kind of makes sense to have slipped right in um <coughs> and i guess yeah, yeah i was trying to think I mean, we can always just come back, uh, but just moving to him for a second. Uh, how did he get Hella's freaking helmet? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it it takes the Asgardian vault like to a times 10 level, <laughs> you know, because you see like a couple of cool trinkets in there. And now you have this guy who has. Yeah, I mean. And then he, he he even mentioned he had like the dagger from like I guess the dark elves from yeah. Thor Dark World, which yeah. I was like never saw it, so don't know what that is. Wait, but have you still not seen it? Never seen it. We're gonna oh, watch yeah. it for the first time yeah, you here. Uh, I think I can't remember if Iron Man three is next or uh, Thor two, but it's it's one of the next movies we're watching on our rewatch of all the all the gotcha. films. I mean, it's definitely um, like not. It's not as bad as everyone says, but like in the MCU tier, it's definitely toward the bottom. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't know what it was other than like, okay, I kind of know what that is from, but definitely I saw the Captain America shield, which I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when he put on Hela's crown, I was like, whoa, how would you have gotten that? Um, Cause Hela wasn't like anything to, to sneeze at. I mean, she was a, she was insanely powerful, yeah. only yeah. defeated by Suter. Yeah, uh, destroying in, during, yeah, yeah, Asgard, through, yeah, through Ragnarok, yeah. So, so, well, one thing real quick, I didn't realize that like that helm imbued powers. You know, I thought that that was just her power, and she wore that helmet. So that's a cool, interesting little thing to find out. Um, but then, so on that note, my my thought process was that in this in this reality, maybe Asgard is destroyed. Cause I feel like that's the only way she would have been taken down. Like no way he steals that helmet from like a powered right. Hela. So got me wondering like kind of how we were, we talked in um, episode one, like what's this Loki doing? Even though this, these probably aren't connected. I am again wondering like what's going on with like Asgard in this universe. What's this Loki up to? What's this Thor up to? Are they dead? Um, Super interesting. And Mjolnir was also in that case. Right, right. Um, and then uh, that arm he punched him with at the very beginning. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm blanking on what the race is called. But he said he took it from a uh, Cronin, I think. A talkative Cronin, which uh, it could be Korg. From, That's what I was actually wondering when you said that. I didn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> so rest in and peace, the, uh, Korg. Yeah, the, if you're a... If you're a superhero in the Thor world, you did not end up well in this timeline. Yeah, apparently. I, I thought I was actually wondering, and this is my first thought when I saw the fist and then I realized it wasn't the same thing. I was actually wondering if he was going to pull out an infinity gauntlet, yeah, the infinity too. gauntlet yeah. with maybe some stones or something, which I mean, it, I get why they didn't because it would have been, I mean, the, the sheer power level of that would have been, Far much, beyond yeah. what, but it's interesting that a character who has apparently collected all of these, the most powerful weapons in the universe, that he didn't, he didn't pull out an Infinity Stone to use against them. Yeah, that is that is interesting, and I mean, also, uh, I feel like I mean, I think this is just hey, it's a comic book story, so don't read too much into it. But like nah, T'Challa <laughs> doesn't have the Black Panther right super humanness so i thought it was kind of like i don't think they would really even be able to beat him 
Especially if he has the freaking god of death's <laughs> superpowers. But so, I mean, I'm not like, like I said, yeah, it's a comic book there, thing. They just had to beat him. So they did. There was a bit of a power gap there, especially considering that Peter Quill. I mean, it's kind of like Batman where Batman has all these gadgets and, you know, he has the suit that works to his benefit. Yeah. But we find out in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 that Peter Quill is actually, you know, half celestial. Right. And that's, that's a premise, an explanation for, oh, that's why he can kind of hang with everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I it's yeah, there was a bit of a power gap there that was you have to kind of lean into, okay, we're watching an animated series. Yeah. So. <laughs> but that that whole moment was cool. The whole like just the, every scene in the collector's domain was cool. It was awesome that we got to see Howard the Duck again. Um yep. voiced by Seth Green, which that's another act like he's only been in the MCU for like a cameo, but he returned for this small role as well. Um, yeah, I was proud of myself when I because my wife was like, who's that? And I said, oh, that's Howard the Duck, which is a throwback to one of our very first episodes we did together. Where I was like, yeah, they had that duck guy in and you were like, it's Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> so I've learned come a long way. Nice. But the student becomes the master. <laughs> but uh, yeah, which I thought how it's funny how nonchalant he was of like, oh, I'm free now. And yeah, let's go get a drink. Yeah, it was there just a bar inside the collector's like containment unit. Yeah, the, the collector's got to get a drink when he's observing his collection i guess i guess so um i'm trying to think was there any other big cool things that that were little easter eggs in there that you noticed or i'm trying to think i think Um, we hit most of the ones i saw other easter eggs um not an easter egg i thought it was interesting that wakanda the wakandans had a spaceship yeah okay yeah let's talk about that and it, it made me wonder you know, the universe is obviously a big place, but it, it seemed the, the impression I got from guardians of the galaxy was like, once you begin to play in the cosmic stadium, so to speak, there is a lot of, um, interactions and gossip and, you know, Oh, I heard about, you know, the, uh, that invasion over there or that planet or whatever. And so, and obviously not that it would have to have happened. I was surprised to hear that they had a spaceship and yet hadn't either um t'challa coming across them or vice versa um because it's in it's in the collector's collection so i i guess i'm in this again it's a comic series so you know i don't know where i'm going with this other than it's cool that they had a spaceship yeah it made me wonder like how like they're obviously wakanda is insanely advanced compared to the, everything else on the earth they've just been secluded and you know keeping that technology to themselves so like it isn't surprising that they would have that capability but it made me wonder if like they always had it type of thing or like t'challa getting abducted by a spaceship was the impetus and they like launched a space program from that moment and then you right. know was like a fledgling thing or you know but um kind of like you said it didn't seem it doesn't really seem like they were a member of the galactic stage as right. it were so and maybe that's why the collector had it because it's like a one of one like maybe that's like one of a kind the yeah. ship they sent up to try to find him and he you know i don't heard know. nothing back i don't know but uh yeah that that was that was super cool that because that that was like the moment where it was kind of revealed that yondu was lying um but so yeah i love that and i love that the fact that what that led to at the end of the episode where they all come back and you know like yeah. thanos is you know, explaining his plan to that Wakandan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's good stuff. Let me ask you something. I want to talk about the stinger. Ego, okay. we have Peter Peter Quill working in a Dairy Queen. You know, he's sweeping the floor and, um, you know, has his, his headphones that we've come to see him love. Yeah. Uh, so presumably his mom still gave it to him and maybe some of that story is similar. But um, Ego shows up and the Watcher said, you'll have to help me here with the phrasing, but says something along the lines of, um, you know, Ego's basically arrived and says basically um, it's essentially doomed the world. Right. Doomed the, does he say, does he say universe? I, he I don't says know. something like that. Like, I, again, I don't remember the exact phrase, but it is something like, and, but, you know, unfortunately, like this would be the end of the universe or something like that yeah okay because i remember the stakes were larger than just that planet um that was an interesting that was really interesting to me because it seems like i mean let's break this down for a second the thanos snap not happening go before that 
the Ravagers picking up the wrong kid. Right. Essentially, you know, there's no Star Lord via Peter Quill. There's no one to fight against Ego. And the Watcher seems reserved to say, yeah, in that timeline, you know, it's, it's, they're doomed. I mean, that's basically what happens with them. Is what was your take on all that? I, well, real quick question. There wasn't a, a stinger like that in episode one, was there? Or no, was it, it just the her appearing in the future? That was basically it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the fact that we kind of got one here made me wonder, like, are we going to return to this? But your thought right there also makes sense as it's just kind of like a dark closing chapter. Like, hey, yeah, we're not coming back to this, but this world's screwed <laughs> and that's the end. So um, I'm, I don't I'm interested because that's plausible to me. So. I could easily see that being the case because all this amazing stuff happens because T'Challa is Star Lord, right? Mm -hmm. But the other side of that page is that okay, but Peter Peter Quill's not, and Peter Quill is Ego's son, and you know his specific character arc, emotional journey that he goes through in Guardians One and Two leads him to like you know, you know he has friends, he has a found family, he like you know, learns to care about like these people and stuff. And that's what ultimately causes him to turn against his dad in, in guardians too. So this version of Peter Quill has just probably had a really honestly shitty life. Like, you know, he's working at a dairy queen and, you know, in wherever it is, you know, never been to the stars or had any of that development. So it's not a dairy queen, by the way, they're delicious. No, no. It's, just, <laughs> it's just, you know, if you're 30 and you, it looked like he was in a rural place and I don't know. I don't want to like make people have like a life crisis on their, their employment, but no, no, of course it not. definitely doesn't seem like he's living the <laughs> illustrious life that we see. in Co Guardians Yeah. Of the Compared to the life we know he has lived of right. being star Lord. Um, you know, when presented with the, the, if, if you're, you know, if that's his situation and this alien God comes down and is like, Hey, you're my kid. He's going to be like, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, dude. He's, he's going to take all the dip cones and right. just like, I'm, I'm, we're bouncing with this you stuff. You know? So I think he's going to be all in on the ego's plan, which, you yeah. know, from watching Guardians 2, we know that that's ultimately going to end badly for Peter because he's basically just going to be like a battery for his dad. But, um, which, it, which, what was his dad's in game again? <clears throat> So like he eagles like the living planet and like he like goes around the universe and was like putting pieces of himself kind of type of thing that then like expand and like become him. So like his goal is to make like everything in the universe like him basically. Right. Uh, but I guess he wasn't like powerful enough to do that. So that's why he's like going around like having offspring with all these different type of aliens, like trying to create an offspring that is like has some of his power or whatever. Enter Peter Quill. So, you know, in Guardians 2, he still goes with Ego, uh, but then he turns against him, but Ego still is managed to, like, well, you know, I'm more powerful than you. You're my battery. Right. But his friends come and save him. Right. Uh, this Peter Quill has no galactic friends, so right. no one's going to come <laughs> save him. So yeah. seemingly... He might have Johnny down the street, but I like, I like your <laughs> distinction. He has no galactic friends. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, Ego's going to presumably use him as a battery and... Maybe no one can stop him at that point, and that thus dooms the world. I think I think the stinger makes without the narration of the watcher, um, it makes it the implications much more pronounced. Of we might see a follow up to the story, right? Um, with my take with the dialogue from the watcher is that it's like you said, this is a dark, a dark closing line of this this timeline, this universe, and. Um, it's interesting. I mean, we it's it's very much this conversation around the ends justify the means type scenario where yes, T'Challa did so much good and emanated so much um of his good nature on those around him to the point where, you know, you prevent the snap, you change the ravager's identity who then go on to do all these amazing things for people and yet what's it all worth if everyone dies at the end? Yeah. <laughs> so Sucks. it kind of, you know, I mean, I don't know. Part of me kind of to go back to Loki. It makes me empathize a bit more with Kang on in the sense of, you right. know, it's the greater good. But then again, you know, we've talked about this in Loki of like, well, how much was that really 
was it really around Loki or excuse me, around the benefit of people or just Kang protecting, you know, him coming to power, so to speak, right. um, which that's a whole different conversation. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a punch to the gut of like, man, you're doing so much good. And yet maybe the snap needed to happen. Maybe this needed to happen. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and I guess we'll see, but I, if, if, if there is no return to this universe, then that is the case, right? That, that ominous close is just that, yeah, this universe is, is doomed, which really cool story, <laughs> but it is a bummer, you know, but, um, like i like that they tell they tell that story earlier than later though because otherwise it creates um sort of a rosy perspective on all these universes where you know every episode there's i don't see like the good guys win so to speak but right it, it creates an overly optimistic portrayal of the infinite universes right and um i think that getting that out early is it creates a sense of it sounds so silly saying it, but a sense of realism, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, get what I mean, saying. like they're not so all going to be so, like, what if and everything's so much better, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. No, I actually like I said, when I first saw it, I just I, I, I took it as a teaser and I was like, I hope we get to see what happens next. But I really like the you, you made it click for me that it's more of a just ominous ending. So I actually. Yeah. I like that, like as like a narrative like story, sure. but it is just it's kind of sad, you know. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, well, what other things did you want to talk about that you ju jumped out to you? Other Easter eggs? Um, um, I, 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 maybe. Sorry, I don't mean to now jump in with my own, but no, I did no, have a ahead. random thing. I don't know which the name of. Um, let me actually. Um, look this up before i butcher this um okay um so we saw uh, of the black order we saw the ma um yeah, who gets ma. basically shot and killed there's one in particular though that i want to uh corpus um, glaive yes actually well, corpus glaive. glaive yes so the story about corpus glaive is that it's something about um his own immortality and that his glaive essentially something along the lines of like steals the life force of people who he kills with it and that he can only be killed by his own weapon that's like the marvel comic book version of that character yeah um and naturally it was different in the marvel um in uh in the movies but i i did think it was interesting that nebula basically just caps him you know just shoots him in the chest and he's out um and it made me wonder like I, I did wonder, is he going to come up later in the episode? But more importantly, if we do somehow get a continuation episode for some reason, mm -hmm. um, would we maybe see him again? So that was a random, totally random thought I had. No, yeah, good that. point. I didn't even think about that because I knew that about like the glaive. You have like to kill him. You got to kill the glaive. So I didn't even think about the fact that he didn't die that way in the show. So yeah, that would be a cool little dangling thread if we do return to it. And while we're on this, the um, oh, I mentioned this earlier, but I already forgot again. The Genesis, the Genesis seeds, or what were they called? Do you remember? Uh, remnants of Genesis? oh, the the embers of Genesis. That's what okay, it was. yeah. Um, I thought that so like a, a mere like moat of it or what something some phrasing like that was like you could terraform a whole planet with it basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know they use some of it to attack. Uh, the member of the Black Order, I forget his name, the big one. And, you know, the freaking vines sprout out of his body and, you know, presumably kill him and begin going crazy. What's well, interesting, and again, we probably aren't returning to this, but it gives the shot at the end of the, the floating head nowhere. nowhere, which is the yeah. head of the Eternal, like beaming kind of with life all of a sudden. So it would be interesting to see, like, not that that would resurrect the head of the Celestial or whatever, but, or, I don't know, but just thought that was cool and like what that might ultimately yeah, and that's, lead to. That's kind of the fun of the show is like the deep diving on like, okay, where could that, what could that mean? Where could that yeah. go? Um, I do want to correct myself earlier because I was, I pulled up Corpus Glaive because I was curious. I couldn't remember how he had died. He was killed by his own glaive. Uh, Vision uses the glaive to kill him. 
uh, in uh, Infinity War, um, which that does track with the comic books. So then again, going oh. back, getting shot in the chest, doesn't really line up. Probably oh, yeah, not in this. I thought you were talking about the What If show. Yeah, well, I was I was saying in What If, I'm curious, you know, he's obviously not, he shouldn't be dead. Right. Um, I feel I feel weird. Like, I feel like I'm like hanging my hat on like, you know, we got to talk about Corpus Glaive. <laughs> no, dude, you're <laughs> but, fine. But really, it was like a, just a random detail well, that I was intrigued by. That's what we're here for. Let's go back to nowhere. Let's talk more about nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think that's all I got on nowhere, though. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was... I feel like there was so much that was just so cool, but it, it we kind of basically touched on it. It was really basically my favorite part was just the impact that just kind of kindness and one man could have that like kind of was the theme of the episode. Um, it was, it was definitely an awesome theme. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. And I thought, like you said, it was a great, um, it was a great, way to um introduce chad chad mcbozeman's character into the show you know i mean he's um and the at the end there was even like a, a nod to him that said yeah basically our our inspiration our hero chad mcbozeman and they did a great job um illustrating him like that in the actual episode yeah which is great like i definitely wasn't land you know so it's just kind of beautiful that it worked out that way um sure and yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited that we will get, you know, three more performances um, from T'Challa. Uh, interesting to hear that they're all going to be different versions. That That's kind of exciting. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll see some similarities, right? I mean, like when Korath is like, we should, I should bow, right? And he bows. Yeah. And he says, he doesn't say like, we don't do that here, but he says something like, you know, oh, I, you know. Yeah. I mean, he was still the same character, yeah. you know, right. like it was like it'll be I, that's a good point like because thus far everything we've seen they're they've been like the same personality obviously right. thanos is kind of like 180 but he, he's still the same thanos he just was reasoned with you know right um which that's which is kind of interesting that like I, we already kind of briefly touched on this but to me that is like the exact same thanos that we're familiar with from the mcu and so like he isn't a psychopath, which I know a lot of people, you know, basically presumed he was, but you know, just had one too many bad days, I guess, as a, as the Punisher would say. Yeah. I mean, he saw the fall of his own civilization and reasoned that this is literally the best course of action and saw himself as a martyr in the sense of I'm, I'm going to sacrifice a lot to, you know, this, this day exacts a heavy toll as he puts it, um, for the, for the betterment of all humankind. Very different from the Thanos we see from the time heist who essentially says, you know, I'm going to really, I'm going to squash you guys and I'm going to really enjoy it. Like this is going to be personal for me. Yeah. Um, Well, but that one had like witnessed his own death and, you know, time traveled and just immediately started throwing down. Yeah. yeah, But presumably all the same guys still, right. You know, um, Oh, I had something, but it's gone. I'm hoping it'll come back to me. But was it about Corpus Glaive by chance? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was still about Thanos, but I I lost it. Yeah, Dang. Okay. All right. It, hopefully, it wasn't that important. It probably wasn't. Well, uh, other Easter eggs, things you picked up on, things you want to mention? <sighs> I mean, I think we hit most of it. I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to be too sure. long winded. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a totally different episode. And for our viewers, I'd love to hear, we'd love to hear what, like, what were your favorite parts, but especially like we're, we're doing a lot of talk on this episode about implications. Like what, like, what does that mean for this universe in yeah. the grander scheme of things? Uh, definitely tell us what you think. Uh, you can tell us in the YouTube comments below, or you can tweet at us at PX lists. And uh, we'd love to engage in a conversation. We would indeed. It's the, it's the, that's our favorite part of this. So Hit us no. with all of your theories and and corrections because I know we've yeah. <laughs> we've made many mistakes here. But yeah, yeah, I feel bad. I'm just like, oh, I just butchered that name. <laughs> that wasn't it. That wasn't it at all. <laughs> but <laughs> we're trying. Yeah. We're doing our best. Yeah, we're just a couple of we're a couple of nerds who just nerd out the best way we can. That's right. So, all right. Well, we'll be chatting. Let's think about what would be next. I guess next is going to be um, we'll be talking about what if episode three come next week we're also going to be talking about the campaign wrap-up 
of Exandria Unlimited. So if you're here checking out um, What If and you want to see some of our other content, there's another series. It's our Exandria Unlimited deep dive series, and it's a Critical Role D&D campaign. It's freaking amazing. You got to check it out. Um, it's critical role, not necessarily us, but uh, <laughs> I think we do a good job too. So definitely follow some of our other content. And if you ever request some some awesome stuff that you've experienced, watched, played, you think we'd really enjoy, definitely let us know that. Yeah, as please, well. please. So I need some new stuff to watch. What's our What's our thumbnail today? Ooh, ooh, what should it be? I feel like I picked the last one, so yeah, you I don't, did. Oh, um, no. I feel like it should be something with the collector, but I don't really know what. I kind of envision like, you know, holding all this stuff, you know, I don't know. Okay. All right. You <laughs> know, go, with that. All. go with that. You know, okay, yeah. all right, I'm going gonna... to drive. You know? I'm going to be touching my, my wrist yeah, controller, yeah. which no one yeah, is yeah. going to know what this means. <laughs> but <laughs> like okay. that guy's doing something and this other guy's, he ate too much. So, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. Why I is he doing like it. his Hulk impression? What is, he, is there something on his arm? Yeah. <laughs> it gets clicks, which is all we need. <laughs> exactly so. Alrighty, all man. right well i guess i'll see you next time yeah thanks for tuning in deuces yeah. bye everybody <laughs>